I'm showing you about the mark of the beast, the mark of the Antichrist. Any time that you have to compromise the word of God, then you have accepted the mark. And you can't do it under a, a, a very clever guideline. Let me do it and then go to church and ask for prayer. And God, he's already forgiven me. God never forgives a premeditated sin. Unless, now, first of all, you have to call for the elders of the church. I'm talking about a premeditated sin or a willful sin. I'm talking about a sin with knowledge. Hear me, somebody. This is the final battle. And where you stand in this warfare is where you're going to spend eternity. Any time that there is a willful act against an instruction you know is wrong because you got scripture when you do this you have backslidden you are no longer in an area where you can pray to God did not the Bible say God hears not a sinner's prayer but they that do his will him he heareth so you have to have intercessory prayer any sick among you call for the elders of the church they shall anoint with all and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and if they have committed sin shall be forgiven them for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much now if you backslidden where you can't talk to God and pray to God then you have to have intercessory prayer from an elder of the church now God in turn when the prayer is being prayed and you ask for repentance then God examines the condition of your heart and then God makes the proper decision that only God alone can make because he's God all by himself and he said I know the heart of a man he knows what you're thinking from afar off so if you truly repent then God takes your sin and he casts it away and God never thinks about that sin no more I don't care what it was what you've done as long as you repent from the heart but make sure that is coming from your heart and not a preparation Lord forgive me I'm getting ready to rob the bank tomorrow but forgive me today you can't do it that way because you're trying to jump ahead of God and you can't jump ahead of God best thing to do is stay behind God and follow God amen I'm talking about the mark of the beast and we've got to understand because church this is the final warfare Armageddon is being waged right now. I've said this in times past. Let me say it again. The battle of Armageddon is being fought right now. It is not between Israel and the Palestinians. And Please. It's between good and evil. Right and wrong. Jesus and the Antichrist. Or Satan if you will. This is the battle that's being waged right today. And it's an intense battle. And I think we brought out uh, how the beast was given permission to make war against the saints. And to do what? Overcome them. Given permission by who? The devil gave permission to the beast. But who gave permission to the devil? Oh, glory. I said we're going in deep water. You have to understand what God is doing. His true church must be tested in this final battle and the victorious ones those who hold on to their testimony are going to come through this praise God like fine gold and all we got to do is make up our mind that we're not going to be deceived we're not going back on the word of God we're not going to compromise the word of truth we're going to hold steadfast to every precept that's found in this book all right now let's connect this with Daniel Daniel the seventh chapter And pick right up uh, verse 17 I think now wait these great beasts which are four kings which shall arise out of the earth read now these four kings deal with 
natural rulers in various dispensations of time. We know the first one would be Nimrod, who started the first movement, organized movement against God, the Babylonian church. Let's turn to, hold your place there, let's turn to Genesis, 10th chapter, bring this out clear. Right from verse 8. I've said in times past, maybe someone has not heard this teaching in its clarity. This is verse 9, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, means Nimrod was a mighty hunter against the Lord, not with the Lord. All right, now Nimrod, verse 10. Babel, now the word Babylon comes directly from the word Babel. The city that they're waging this great warfare right now. And this ought to give us some slight indication. Baghdad. Babylon was actually located in an area that where Baghdad is right today. Babylon represents everything that God hates to its maximum. Now God mentions about this wicked city in Genesis. He mentions about this wicked city in the book of Revelation. So you know what he thinks about Babylon. All right, now let's connect this uh, with uh, ch uh, chapter 11, verse 1. in the land of Shinar. Now this is where they established Babylon, which I told you is uh, would be uh, in this approximate area of Baghdad uh, right today. So Nimrod established this great movement that would oppose God. He was such a powerful leader. There has never been a man before or since that had the power and the organizational skill that Nimrod had. Nimrod controlled the known world at that time. And uh, uh, people's, uh, well, no sense of going that, but Nimrod was a powerful man. His wife, Samarimus, helped him after his death develop the religion which she took to even higher heights. And of course, we know Easter, Christmas, uh, Halloween actually came from. Uh, the cult of worship in Babylon. So all of those things came, uh, the jewelry and the wearing of makeup from Babylon. And this again is why God hates us. But we're trying to deal now with these four kings. Nim uh, Nimrod was the first one, established the Babylonian cult of religion. Uh, the next one we go to would be uh, Constantine the Great. Now what did Constantine do? Constantine took the Babylonian church that Nimrod started and he brought it into the New Testament era of grace. This is why the two are so closely together and both of them were world leaders. Both of them were military geniuses. Both of them commanded the whole world at that time. Nimrod and Constantine. Constantine of course is the father of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, let's connect this again in the book of Revelation, uh, 17th chapter. And this is a very important connection. I want you to pay close attention. In the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation, let's pick right up in verse, verse 5. Mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of Hollis and abomination of the earth. 